Hello and you're very welcome to our service of morning prayer on this, the eighth Sunday after Trinity. The theme of today's service is the generosity of God and how we too can participate in that generosity and by so doing have an influence on everyone around us. The Lord be with you and also with you. When the people saw the sign that Jesus had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. We join together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. O God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you, we have broken your commandments, we have often been selfish, and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Your word is a lantern to my feet, and a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine into our hearts. The canticle for this morning is Glory and Honour. Glory and honour and power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created all things, and by your will they have their being. Glory and honour and power are yours by right, O Lamb, for us slain. For by your blood you ransomed us for God, from every race and language, from every people and nation, to make us a kingdom of priests, to stand and serve there before our God. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honour, glory and might, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 4, beginning at the 42nd verse. A man came from baal bringing fruit from the first fruits to the man of God, twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. Thus said the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 145, verses 10 to 19. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power. To make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all things living with plenty. The Lord is righteous in all his ways 
and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to the throat of those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him, because they saw the signs he was doing with the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw the large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, also the fish, as they were much wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments and the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten, and they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realised that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to, into the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat, and started across, across the lake to Capernaum. Now it, it was dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat. They were terrified. But when he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. They wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. O oh God, open our hearts and minds to your holy word, so that our lives may be transformed according to your will. Amen. Our Gospel reading today tells the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Now, this story is recounted in three of the four Gospels, in Matthew, Mark and John. And in John's account, which we just heard, we see that the physical feeding of the 5,000 was a prefiguring of Jesus' monumental claim, I am the bread of life, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. 
Jesus fed the multitudes physically as he feeds the multitudes today spiritually. Indeed, that is the essence of some interpretations of the sacrament of Holy Communion within our tradition of Anglicanism. However, can this story have any practical relevance in today's world? I believe it can. The story in itself illustrates three Christian principles about the character of God that in the ups and downs of daily living we tend to overlook. First, it is important to bring any problems or concerns we may have to God, knowing that God is in control. This comes with the caveat that it will not make our problems or concerns go away, but is an acknowledgement that God can and will help us deal with them. Second, we must be prepared to be surprised that God may use our meagre resources in ways we cannot even dream about. And third, when God acts, he does so liberally. Let's look at each of these principles in turn. The first principle is that God wants us to bring our problems and concerns to him. The disciples were faced with a massive problem, how to feed 5,000 people with no money, nor indeed shops or supermarkets to buy food from. It seemed an impossible problem, but they did the only thing they could. They looked to Jesus for the answer. Throughout the ages, there are numerous testimonies of people who have faced major crises in their lives where they could not see a way out. However, when they stopped fretting about those situations and took their problems to God in prayer, a new pathway out of their problems opened for them. Mother Teresa, in an interview with a journalist about her life and work in the Calcutta slums, said the following about our Western society. Your poverty is greater than ours. The spiritual poverty of the West is much greater than the physical poverty of the East. In the West, there are millions of people who suffer loneliness and emptiness, who feel unloved and unwanted. They are not the hungry in the physical sense. What is missing is a relationship with God and each other. The second principle is that God can take our meagre resources and use them spectacularly. We might often feel, like the disciples did, that five loaves and two fish aren't going to go anywhere. But our gifts in the hands of God can be multiplied spectacularly. Often we think of what we have to offer isn't worth offering, but Jesus took the five loaves and two fish and fed 5,000 people. Now, over the years, there has been a great debate about this. Was the miracle that everyone was literally fed by the five loaves and two fish, or was the miracle the generosity of the boy who donated his food that encouraged others to also share what they had brought with them? To me, that debate is merely a sideshow and not particularly relevant. Some commentaries speak of this as the multiplication of loaves and fishes. But it is more than a simple miracle. It can be a way of life. What happened on that hillside is an indication of how God wants the world to operate. In other words, God wills a world where everybody wins and nobody loses. In contemporary speak, we might call it that overused phrase, a win-win situation. But whatever we might call it, it is a spirituality of multiplication. And it can only come about when we give away something we have, when we make a sacrifice, even if it is out of our own scarcity. It is then that God blesses our gifts and multiplies them, and there can be enough for everyone and even more. It is only by this method that God can ensure that everyone's needs are met. God provides, but he has chosen to use the little we have to kickstart the process. I find that both comforting and exciting, that we can participate in God's solution to our own problems. The third principle is that when God supplies the needs, everyone goes home satisfied. What has often surprised me in this story is the fact that there were 12 baskets left over. People didn't just eat a little, they ate a lot, and there were still some left over. When God supplies our needs, we don't have to worry. He cares for us just as we do for our children. For those with a tendency to be worriers, perhaps it might be help if we took to heart the words of Matthew 6 
and I quote, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more value than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labour or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, when the people had been fed and realised the miracle that had been just witnessed, they wanted to make Jesus their king. But unfortunately, it was for all the wrong reasons. They wanted Jesus as king so that they could rise up against the occupying Romans and drive them out of their land, a win-lose proposition. But Jesus wanted to teach them win-win multiplication spirituality with its emphasis on caring and inclusion for everyone. And thereby lies the key. We, as members of the Church of God and followers of Jesus Christ, are called to multiplication spirituality. There is a temptation to look at all the challenges that we may face and to despair. However, Jesus wants us to draw aside and bring our problems to him. When we do, he will help us overcome our challenges and we will experience the abundance of his grace. Amen. A Collect of the Word Almighty and most merciful God, the protector of all who trust in you, strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love you will rescue us from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We affirm our faith in the following words. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
the Collect for the eighth Sunday after Trinity. Blessed are you, O Lord, and blessed are those who observe and keep your law. Help us to seek you with our whole heart, to delight in your commandments, and to walk in the glorious liberty given us by your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue to pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name that you are both our provider and our provision. You give us all that we need for both our physical and spiritual needs, and you yourself are the provision, for you are life and light, health and wholeness. You are the way and you are the truth. You are our saviour and you are our friend. We thank you that you have provided all that is needed for holiness and righteousness in Christ Jesus, and that in him we have all that we need to live a godly life. Keep us ever looking to Jesus, and keep us, we pray, from straying away from your loving embrace. We thank you that you have promised to supply all our needs according to your riches in glory, and we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten Son not to condemn us, but to save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A prayer for the Christian Church and us its members as we seek to serve those around us throughout the world. Almighty God, fill us as members of your Church with the power of your Holy Spirit this day. Fill us with your joy, your wisdom, and with constant reminders that your presence will go with us and you will give us rest. We thank you that you came to give new life, peace, hope and joy, not just to us, but to those we display your generosity and compassion. We thank you that your power is made perfect in our weakness. We know that you are with us and we believe that it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit that you make a difference in our world. May your church humbly recognise your authority in all that it is and does. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We remember all those parts of our world where war and civil unrest and terrorist activities are still very much a reality of daily life. We pray for our troubled world, wandering in a disorientating twilight of uncertainty and of a superficial peace. In our hearts we know that this is not true peace, rather suspicion and fear, animosity and greed. We ask that your Spirit may direct the leaders of the nations of the world as they seek solutions by which the peoples of the earth can live at peace with one another. Amen. We pray at this time for all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit, for their families and for those who care for them, those who are in hospital, housebound or in any kind of suffering and those who have been bereaved. In a few moments of quietness, we remember all those known to us who are in need of our prayer. Heavenly Father, we commend to your love and care those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and especially those we have named and held up to you in the silence of our hearts. In your goodness and mercy, grant them health of body, soundness of mind, peace of heart and comfort in their loss, that in wholeness of being they may glorify your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for those on holiday or those planning to go shortly. Lord of all good life, be with those who are presently or will shortly be seeking rest and a change of pace on holiday. Keep them in safety and renew their strength that they may return to their homes refreshed in body, mind and spirit, to the glory of your name. Amen. And again, in a short period of silence, let us bring our own prayers, petitions and thanksgivings to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for our joy, not only in your creation, but also in the creativity you have placed within our lives, that we have been made in your image, 
that we have been designed to reflect your ability to think, to plan, to reason, to create and to love. We thank you for the satisfaction we have from work well done, for every opportunity you provide to serve you by serving our neighbour, for the sense of meaning and purpose that our serving others brings to our lives. We thank you that even when we are unable to serve and are tempted to feel useless and rejected, we can still rely on your love and know that we are accepted. We praise you for all those who serve us and help us, for those whose work means that there is food to eat and water to drink, for those who are there for us when we are in need. May our words and deeds always demonstrate our gratitude to others. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us give thanks to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. For the love of our Father, the maker of all, the giver of all good things, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who lived and worked among us, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For his suffering and death on the cross and his resurrection to new life, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For his rule over all things and his presence in the world, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who teaches us and guides us, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the grace of the Spirit in the work of the Church and in the life of the world, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We go into the world to walk in God's light to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.